my lovelies welcome back to my channel for those of you guys that are new welcome my name is pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what i do for those of you guys returning welcome back my lovelies here we are doing another reading for you guys before we get into it i do want to give you guys a quick update we have recently partnered up with amazon and we uh now have a storefront with amazon so any of the tools and ingredients that we use in any of the spell work you'll be able to find on the description links below um, that will take you to our storefront and you'll be able to find all the ingredients in a very easy way uh, no longer having to struggle looking for them or anything like that also those of you guys that are interested in our manifest your destiny book it is now out and like i said the descriptions are everything is going to be down below on the description box as well as our journals our manifesting journals our gratitude journals and soon to come our shadow work journals so you'll be able to find all of that on there if you guys are interested in following us in any of our social medias you'll be able to find that on the description uh, link below as well please be careful make sure not to be following or uh, connecting with any of the scammers we have thousands of people pretending to be me on TikTok, on instagram yada 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 you can find the real links to all of our social medias here on my youtube channel so uh, just want to give you guys a quick update on that all right this reading is going to be for the person that's on your mind we're going to look into the situation and see exactly what they're feeling what they're thinking about this connection and um let's get right into it all right my lovelies let's get into it like i said grab or like I always say, grab your coffee, grab your tea, your wine, whatever it is that you drink. Uh, take a seat back and relax and let's get into it. We're going to begin here with my lovely Geminis. It is Gemini season, you guys. Uh, for those of you Gemini babies, happy birthday, brightest of blessings. Let's see what's going on with Gemini. All right. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please step forward. Allow us to see, hear, sense, feel, and receive the messages loud and clearly. For all the signs, we're going to begin here with Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Uh, reveal to me the person on Gemini's mind. What are they feeling about this connection? What are their intentions regarding this connection? Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. The person on Gemini's mind. If you guys are interested in any of the readings or any of the services that we provide, you'll be able to find all of that and our online store as well. All right, here we go, Gemini. Let's see what's going on. All right, so first card here that we have is the Wheel of Fortune. So this is talking to me about a connection that could have been unexpected or something that uh, recently could have occurred. For others of you, it could have been that you had this meeting or this connection with this person uh, to very weird circumstances it could have been some of you guys coming out of a relationship when this person comes in um right at the brink of some type of change or transformation in your life now we have the empress card here we have the high priestess and we have the queen of wands we have three female energies so this is talking to me about they are definitely aware that you are special gemini they see you in a very different light they see you confident but they also see you very reserved, like there's some type of mystery to you. So they may still be trying to get to know you better or to have you open up a little bit more. Um, for others of you, it could represent that this person that is um, that you're dealing with is uh, maybe dealing with two people. Um, it could be a past lover, someone from their past um, before they came in contact with you. We did have the Wheel of Fortune at the bottom. So again, this is talking about um, predestined um, connections or predestined uh, situations uh, that may have arose around the time frame of connecting with this person. Now, for others of you, this could indicate to me that there is a bit of like too, a little bit too many people connecting in this uh, connection or in this relationship. This is giving me like the mother vibes. So for some of you guys, it could indicate that this person, if it is a masculine, um, this person heavily relies on the mother figure or like they are kind of trying to get the mother figure to be okay with this type of connection. We also do have here the eight of swords as well as the six of wands, sorry, six of swords and the three of swords. 
So if you're feeling like this is a new connection, I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like this person is carrying a lot of baggage right now. Uh, they still haven't fully released themselves from a past trauma or a past relationship. Uh, if this is a relationship you've been dealing with for quite a while and you feel like it could potentially be a mama's boy or like a daddy's girl type of energy um, where they're grown, but they're not fully grown. Like they solely depend on the mother or the father um, accepting or like trying to appease them, trying to be to their standards, whatever their mother or their father standard may be. Um, and the reason I say, you know, it could be a father figure as well. Uh, Empress is female energy, but we're basically basing it off of, or the readings that I do are basically channeled messages. So for some of you guys, it could represent a female energy around your partner, the person of your interest. However, I'm also seeing masculine energy in this queen of wands. Um, so for some of you guys, it could represent like, uh, maybe for some of you guys, there is healing that needs to happen. Uh, where this connection is bringing up a lot of like uh, trauma from past relationships or trauma from childhood. Um, it's like suppressed type of emotions. It could be that they're challenging you, especially if you had a very like toxic type of, type of relationship with your mother. Um, it could be that this person kind of emulates them or in some shape, way or form um, brings triggers from that of the past. Um, I feel like underneath there's an undertone here of wanting to appease other people rather than focus primarily on the connection or the relationship. And this could be you, Gemini, doing this, or this could be the person of your interest. My advice, again, with the Eight of Swords, Six of Swords, and Three of Swords, if this is an energy of, I messed up, I'm so sorry, let me make it up to you type of thing, and you keep giving them opportunity after opportunity, this person is not wanting to change and they're not wanting to elevate. And for some of you, if you've been dealing this with this for a while, it may feel like you've outgrown the relationship and you're, it's almost like I'm seeing you being loyal to the time spent with this person versus like being loyal because it's reciprocated. So what I'm hearing is don't enslave yourself to loyalty. And what this could mean is that if you've been with this person, as an example, for five years, for 10 years, and you're not wanting to give up on them, and you keep hoping for the better, and you keep holding on to this relationship, and it, it, you deep down you feel like you're not being whatsoever fulfilled in this relationship, but you feel like still bound to this person because, again, loyalty or the feeling of not being or not wanting to be the one to give up. You need to remember that loyalty represents being loyal to those that reciprocate your integrity and your honor or that protect your integrity or your honor. If a person is betraying you or cheating on you or stepping out of the relationship, you're not really being loyal to, to them by holding on. Um, or I should say you are being loyal to them by holding on, but you're not being loyal to yourself. So this is something that is coming through very strongly for a lot of you guys. I feel like this month of June going even into July, you're going to be so much more empowered, Gemini. And if you feel like you're being pushed, right, but like the universe is like pushing you towards movement, towards it's time to move on, really heed the call, Gemini, because I feel like you're no longer in the vibration of this person. Like you have the Empress here and the High Priestess uh, and the Queen of Wands. Empress is all about unconditional love, right? Uh, being completely devoted to the cause of love. But the High Priestess is also knowing or understanding your intuition and being able to decipher how much of that unconditional love you're willing to give and also sacrifice, right, for the cause of love or for the reason of love. But with the Queen of Wands here, it's like you you can no longer continue going through the same situation and then expecting a different outcome when you're not guarding yourself or when you're not protecting yourself. At this point, it's like I said, by you being loyal to this person, if this person is being deceitful or being dishonest with you, you're no longer being loyal to them. 
you're being disloyal to yourself because deep down in you, you may feel like you deserve better. And if that's what you're feeling, you definitely do deserve better, Gemini. So again, if you feel like the universe is kind of pushing you to move forward at this point in time, it is necessary for you to do that. Now I'm going to be pulling out uh, an Oracle card to see exactly what is the overall message here for this reading for Gemini's Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is the overall message here from Spirit? Okay. And we have instincts. So again, when we talk about when we th uh, when we talk about the high priestess, the high priestess is yes, it is all knowing, but also intuitively understanding that if you are getting a message, if your intuition is telling you, you know, there's so many red flags, but yet you can't really put your finger on it or you can't like if you're intuitively picking up that maybe your partner is talking to someone. But you know what? I don't have any proof, so it must not be true. The more you try to silence that intuition, right? Because the high priestess is, like I said, the high priestess is all knowing, regardless of what it is that you know or you are aware of on a subconscious level, connecting to that of the spirit realm, you will get spiritual downloads. And it's not so much about seeing it in the physical aspect, but more of listening to your intuition, listening to that, you know, that call that you're hearing, that warning that you're hearing. The more you try to silence it, the more stronger it gets. And the stronger it gets, it's that's how you know that it is your intuition. So again, listen to your instincts right now, Gemini. That's what they're really encouraging you right now at this point in time regarding this connection. All right, my lovelies. Now we're going to move on to Cancer. Let's see what's going on with Cancer. Okay. Let's see what's going on with Cancer, Spirit Guides, Ancestors, and Archangels. Speak to me about the person on Cancer's mind. It's the person of their interest. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, Cancer, here we go. We're starting off here with the Eight of Wands, the Page of Pentacles, the Eight of Pentacles, the Full Card, the Five of Pentacles, and the Two of Wands. So at the bottom, what we're seeing here is the Ten of Swords. I feel like for a lot of you Cancers, you may be dealing with the situation where for some of you guys, you're coming out of a long-term committed relationship. For others of you, you're coming to the final conclusion of basically the struggle of meeting someone or connecting with someone that is like-minded like you, Cancer. So the culmination of an ending is here. And from the Ten of Swords, we go to the Ace again, right? Which is a new beginning. It's a new endeavor. So some of you guys may feel like you have been really tested when it comes to relationships or with this specific connection. But it's time to embrace the end so that you can fully embrace the new beginning. We have the full card right here. So again, there is definite new beginnings coming towards you. Now we do have here the Eight of Wands with the Page of Wands and the Eight of Pentacles. For some of you guys, you may be feeling like there could have been some type of separation, some type of ending here. And there's been hope or desire to hear back from this person um, to want to rekindle or to want to fix this relationship. I do see momentum picking up this month. I do see them reaching out and it's going to come to as a surprise to you, Cancer, because it's going to feel almost like that window of opportunity closed um, when they decide to reach out. And there is this, you know, I'm seeing you look towards a new beginning. I'm seeing you look towards something new. So for some of you guys, you're right at the cusp of letting go or releasing yourself from a relationship that you've outgrown and going towards um, a much more better situation or a better connection. But I feel around this time that you are basically going with the flow or ready to embrace new beginnings. I feel like you're going to be tested because this person is coming back around and reaching out. 
Now, the advice that they're giving you here is, like I said, what's really standing out to me is that the Page of Pentacles, the Fool, and the Two of Wands is looking towards the past. So um, in the past, there was a desire to want to fix or rekindle or make something work, something that was just not clearly not working out. But at this point, there is the full card here with the five of pentacles, which is no longer settling or even if this person reaches out, I feel like you're going to be right at the cusp of realizing that you're no longer going to be begging or asking people to stay or to put effort if they're not wanting to. It's like you're valuing yourself. You're learning to see the value in you and what you're worth and what you deserve. And you are definitely looking towards embracing a new beginning here with the Eight of Wands, the Fool card, and the Two of Wands. So again, if you guys are dealing with a situation where there is an ending or some type of culmination and you were hopeful or wanting to hear from this person, this person will be reaching out to you. But again, like I said, I feel very strongly, strongly that around this time that they reach out, there's an epiphany going on in your head or a realization that you deserve better. It could be that right around that time, that's if they haven't already reached out to you. You may already be uh, looking around. You may already be talking to someone or ready to begin a new um, a new journey, embracing new beginnings, because I definitely do see passion around you. Um, let's pull out the overall message here. What is the overall message from Spirit for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. The overall message here regarding this situation. And we have manipulation. So again, I feel I feel like you guys are at the brink of cutting ties or cutting cords with a pattern that you've had in the past where perhaps if things didn't work out in relationships, it was really difficult for you to let go or completely give up. Um, so you would stay holding on to the desire of them wanting to work it out and then they would reach out and then it doesn't pan out. And I feel like now you're coming to the realization like I'm no longer going to allow people to manipulate me. I'm no longer going to allow people to manipulate my emotions or to play off my emotions it's like you're taking charge, Cancer, because you're very aware of what you're bringing to the table or you're very aware of what you do and give in relationships and in realizing that you're also realizing the value. And I see you like kind of like having this glow up when it comes to your time, when it comes to like I am worthy and I deserve better than this and you're walking away from anything that is no longer serving you, Cancer. So that's amazing energy because honestly, this person that keeps coming back, they're not bringing anything other than their ego and wanting to see if, you know, if they can convince you again. And I feel like at this point, it's time for you to completely walk away from this. All right, Cancers. Now we're moving on to Leo. Let's see what's going on with Leo, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Speak to me about Leo's person, the person on their mind. What is their intentions or their feelings towards Leo? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Leo's. Okay, here we go. Leo, we're starting off here with the Page of Cups, the Queen of Swords, the, uh, sorry, the Hanged Man, the Ten of Pentacles, the Hermit, and the Devil card. Oof, right at the bottom. We have the Chariot. Okay. So I'm definitely seeing a lot of excitement, a lot of passion uh, for you Leos out there. Uh, if you guys are currently single, you won't be single for too long as I, as I am seeing uh, a couple of love offers coming through for you. Now, what I do want to uh, really speak about here with the chariot card is what's really standing out to me is the way he's holding um, the reins. And in the regular deck of... Um, the rider uh, tarot, the chariot is not really holding the reins. It's like he's guiding the horses, right? He's guiding the chariot through his own will. But in this deck, what's really standing out to me is the way he's holding the reins. But 
what that is symbolizing to me is that you are taking charge, Leo. So I feel like this month you're really taking charge of your love life. For some of you guys, you've been busy or you've been putting a lot of effort and energy towards other things, maybe even not really nurturing or not really putting a lot of time into your love life. But I see you guys really taking charge this month. And it's like realizing I've been single for so long. I don't want to be single no more. And I'm ready. Uh, for others of you, it's realizing like, hey, it's time that I allow myself to be happy and you're opening up. Whereas in the past, perhaps you could have been very guarded, Leo. Now, I am seeing here a love offer that's coming through. For some of you guys, you may be a little bit caught off guard and I feel like it's coming from a person that you wouldn't necessarily either be necessarily wanting to get attention from. So it's coming to me as a person that is complete opposite of what you're used to or what you're accustomed to. Uh, with the hanged man here having the need to see things from a very different perspective. You have a type, Leo. And let's just put it out there. You have a specific type and that specific type is not necessarily good for you. So I feel that this person that's coming through for you is a person that is completely the opposite of what you're used to, but it's something that is good for you. Now, if you are dealing with someone, Leo, I feel like this person is really going to challenge you. Uh, specifically, it's going to challenge your ego. And like I said, one of the things to look at or to take a step back and really look at is when you feel like this person is triggering you in some shape, way or form, don't necessarily take it personal, but ask yourself, what is it about what they said or what they did that really triggered you? Is it them uh, specifically or is it that it's creating some type of memory for you in the past and you're kind of judging based off of past experience? So what they're showing you here is having the need to have the internal dialogue. Um, if, you, Like I said, if you are already dealing with this person, this is a person that is really going to challenge you, but in a very positive way. Why? Because you're able to put pride aside and, you know, and I, I it's not something that is like for Leo's, it's not necessarily something that is out of this world to imagine that they would sacrifice for the person they love because you guys do have a tendency of doing that. But perhaps in the past, you've been hurt so much that you've become so guarded where you don't allow people to get close to you or at least not close enough that they can hurt you. But this person is going to challenge you in a positive way and you will see that positive aspect um, because it's really going to challenge you in your development and in your self-growth. And like I said, I feel like this is something monumental for you because you do have here, um, we technically have four my, uh, sorry, major arcanas. We have the hanged man, the hermit, the devil, and the chariot card. So um, I feel like right now there is major momentum regarding your love life. For those of you guys that are single, uh, you will be, you know, drawing in or pulling towards a person that is not necessarily your usual type. Um, but it is someone that is going to bring you a lot of, not only a lot of healing, but a lot of stability, something you haven't experienced for quite a while. Now I'm going to be pulling out a Oracle card. Let's see what your overall message here regarding this situation for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Leo, Sun, oh, okay. We have cards popping out. <laughs> so I am going to go with it. And we have emotions, emotions and pressure. So again, when I say that this person is going to challenge you, that's immediately what I got. Um, but sometimes that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a good thing because it's, you know, whatever triggers us, whatever affects us, whatever has like they do something and you have this crazy kind of reaction it's not speaking so much about the situation or the person itself. It has more to do with the internal battle or the internal issues that we are dealing with that are coming up to surface. So again, I feel like there may you may be feeling like this connection um, or this person that you're dealing with may pressure you. Um, and I feel like it's not pressure of trying to pressure you into something. I feel like it has more to do with pressure of asking yourself like do you really want to deal with this and maybe for some of you guys it's like 
do I really want to deal with this because I'm so accustomed to being single, doing things my way, and now you kind of have to accommodate if you want something to work out. But again, it's pressure that's being built off of emotion. So my advice to this is sometimes the best thing you can do is get out of your own way, uh, Leo, and allow things to flow organically. A lot of the times people that challenge us, like I said, is not necessarily a bad thing. When we get out of the comfort zone, that's when we experience change. And I feel like at this point, that is most definitely necessary for you, Leo. All right, we're moving on here with Virgo. Let's see what's going on with Virgos. If you guys like these videos, definitely comment, like, share. Let me know you guys enjoy them so I can continue doing them. Um, you guys know how busy and crazy my schedule is, and I know that I keep saying I'm going to be more proactive on my YouTube channel, and I'm trying the best I can, and I will continue to be more proactive. I promise you guys at least four videos every week, um, but I do need to see that you guys are, you know, watching the videos, so definitely like, share, and comment. Let me know that you guys are enjoying them so I can continue putting more effort. Sometimes we need that little pat in the back, you know, to be like, hey, you know, Pinky, I am watching your videos because it does mean a lot to me, the fact that you guys enjoy these videos and the fact that I will definitely be more motivated to do more videos for you guys. Okay, enough of my spiel. <laughs> All right, let's go to Virgo. Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus regarding their person, the person on their mind. What's going on there? Give us clarity in regards to Virgo's person. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Virgo. We're starting off here with the Nine of Cups, Queen of Pentacles, Page of, sorry, Knight of Swords, Seven of Cups, Six of Swords, and the Five of Swords. Okay, so I'm seeing for some of you guys, there is almost this feeling of, there's this feeling of a missed opportunity. Um, it could have been that you put, the person that you were dealing with on a pedestal. Uh, but things were not being necessarily equal or balanced or reciprocated here with the Six of Pentacles. And this is the energy that's coming through. So the Nine of Cups is always about wish fulfillment. It's always about abundance, right? When you get the Six of Pentacles, something, either someone in this connection was doing too much and the other was doing too little or vice versa. It wasn't an equal exchange. And I feel like you've been in your head about this situation, but I feel like this person plays on like the hot and cold. So perhaps for some of you guys, you hear from them and then they go ghost on you and then they come back. The reason why they're doing this is because they are playing with you and with your emotions. And the, as messed up as it sounds, the easiest way or the easiest form of manipulation is to allow someone to miss you, to crave you and desire you. And the only way to do that is to, you know, be super loving and super caring and then completely fall off the map because that keeps them wondering. And the more they wonder, the more they obsess. So I feel this is a pattern for that person that you're dealing with. So what they're telling you here, it's time for you to listen to your head, Virgo. Stop giving people more than one opportunity. If at first they, you know, let you down or they don't come through with what they say they're going to do, you know, it's up to you if you want to give them a, a second chance. But if you give them a three, a third or fourth chance, like you're being delusional and hoping that they're going to come through for you. So at this point, what they're telling you is stop leading with your heart. It's time that you start paying attention to your what your mind is telling you. And if you are still dealing with this person, know that it's more of an ego type of thing more of wanting to know if they can still manipulate you into going back with them or giving them an opportunity. With the Six of Swords here, you need to move on from this situation because it's toxic, because it's over. And the thing about it is that I feel this person creates these crazy, like, petty arguments or petty reasons to not communicate or to not communicate efficiently. But then they their excuse is that because you offended them. But in reality, it's like they kind of, led you to that discussion or to that argument so what they're telling you here is that this connection is definitely not balanced and my advice honestly is let go of it like walk away from the situation it's time to move on to something new uh virgo and if it is not a person that you're dealing with but it's the type of theme you've been dealing with what they're showing you here is that this needs to end 
You need to pay attention to what your mind is telling you versus what your heart is telling you. Oftentimes, when you listen to your heart, you give people more than one opportunity that they don't deserve, and they continuously keep letting you down. And then you're left feeling empty and feeling like it was something wrong that you did, when in reality, it doesn't speak about you, but it speaks about the people that you have a tendency of choosing. Let's see what your overall energy message here is for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus regarding this situation. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, here we go. And the card that we have here is uh, Wetlands, Mixed, sorry, Mirrored. So again, I feel like for a lot of you guys, it's a theme. It's some a cycle that you've dealt with. It's a cycle that continuously keeps repeating the moment you decide Virgo that you deserve more than to be played with or to be allowing people to lead you astray the moment you decide you deserve better than that and I don't need to tell you Virgos that you guys are smart because you guys are beyond smart um one of you know one of the very you that is definitely a perfectionist um we have a tendency of being a perfectionist towards everything and everyone that we deal with but when it comes to love you guys kind of go blind and i'm not saying to i'm not saying to try to achieve a perfect a perfect type of relationship because no relationship is perfect but what i am saying is do not lose yourself when it comes to love. Do not lose yourself completely. Keep a little bit of, you know, the guardedness that you have a tendency of having when it comes to other practical matters, when it comes to business, when it comes to your career, when it comes to your family even. Um, you could be a little bit judgy, a little bit judgmental, you know, not, not to say that it's necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes that's a good thing. But what I'm saying is that when it comes to relationships, you kind of go blind. So it's important to hold on to certain parts of yourself and make sure not to lose them when it comes to connections. Um, because this is what's going to help you and this is what's going to keep you from getting hurt or allowing people to use you. Um, so I hope that you take these messages in a positive way. Because I know my Virgos are going to come for me be like... <laughs> All right, moving on. It's coming from a loving place, Virgo, okay? All right. <laughs> Let's go to Libra. Let's see what's going on with Libra, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Oh, okay. We have two cards that popped up, so we are going to hold on to them. All right. Let's see what's going on with Libra, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus, the person on Libra's mind. So I see one of you guys definitely not wanting to deal with, <laughs> with the other. <coughs> Excuse me. Holy moly, guacamole. Okay. We have cards popping out of nowhere. Okay. So we have the Two of Swords, the King of Swords, the Ace of Wands, the Queen of Wands, the Tower, and the Death card. Whoa. Okay. So, Libra, there is some stubbornness con connecting or having to do with this connection or this relationship. If recently you were blocked or if recently they kind of disappeared on you, it's time to embrace a new beginning. Let go of the past. Stop holding on to this. The reason I say this is because I do see a new beginning coming for you, whether you're ready or not. And if you are still holding on to a certain situation, I feel like it could hinder your future. Um, so it could be kind of a situation where the ex comes back, you start dealing with them, and then you end up getting yourself in a relationship where later on that could bite you in the ass, them finding out that you were still talking to the ex type of thing. Um, but I am seeing like someone was completely detached from this connection and I'm assuming it's the person you're dealing with. Um, they either blocked you or pulled away, uh, or if they did recently block you on social media and you're wondering what the hell is going on, chances are they're dealing with someone else and that's the reason why they've blocked you on everything. Now, if this is a relationship that recently came to some type of ending and there's still hopefulness of a new beginning or to want to rekindle this situation, I feel like there's more things that are going to be coming out in the open um, to you that you're not aware of. So again, I highly encourage you not to um, 
not to hold on to this situation anymore. I feel like it's toxic and I feel like at this point, it's time for you to fully embrace the new beginning that's coming towards you. I do see some type of fruitful connection coming through for you sometime by the end of this month, the beginning of July. And it's really going to like be majorly uh, transformative for you. I feel like for a lot of you guys, it could be, um, it's giving me a lot of Scorpio energy. So for some of you guys, you may be dealing with the Scorpio. For others of you, it could be Pluto's energy. Um, recently went into Capricorn in retrograde, but it will be going back into Aquarius to finally station there for the next 15 years. Um, so again, major transformation that is at, you know, at foot. So if you guys are dealing with a situation where there was some type of recent breakup or separation, if they come back around, even if they unblock you, Libra, and they come back around or they're wanting to reconnect, do not be quick to open your heart up because I feel like there's a lot of things that you're not aware of that are going to be coming out to the open. Um, and this could really challenge you in the aspect of feeling like, why did I give in so easy or why was I a fool? Don't rush into anything is what they're telling you right now. Let things play out the way they're supposed to because I feel like there is more to what you think you're aware of there's more that is going to be unfolding if you guys are recently dealing with someone and again like i said everything was going perfect and i don't know where they blocked you or they you know uh are not communicating with you i feel like they haven't been completely honest with you for some you could have been dealing with someone that was either in a relationship that recently became single when you started dealing with them but then all of a sudden they ended up going back and they weren't completely honest or transparent transparent to you about that situation and i feel like that will be coming out in the open sometime this month so don't rush into anything Libra. it's giving me very chaotic energy to be completely honest with you all right and your message here is running and confrontation so again i'm sensing really strongly like there is a lot of things that are still playing out a lot of things that will be coming out to the open that you didn't know about uh it's going to catch you a bit of guard for some of you guys you're going to feel like you're thrown aback because you were definitely not expecting this it's giving me almost the vibe of dealing with a person that presents themselves to be single um but and actually they turn out to be married and they were just going through some type of turbulence in the relationship but they decided to work things out and they weren't honest to you about that so that where the confrontation may come about all right my lovelies i hope that this gives you some type of insight now moving on to scorpio let's see what's going on with scorpio's sun moon rising venus what are the messages here for scorpio regarding the person on their mind scorpio sun moon rising venus if you guys do enjoy these videos, definitely let me know. We are not holding anything back, you guys. <laughs> All right, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Scorpio. We have the Queen of Swords, the Ten of Cups, the Seven of Swords, the Six of Pentacles, the Eight of Pentacles, and the Nine of Cups. Okay. So I feel, I, I feel like you guys have been either dealing with some type of insecurity issue or your partner may be dealing with that. Um, there's almost like things are, okay, I'm going to be honest with you, Scorpio. I'm getting the vibe like things are going progressively well or a little bit too good that you're questioning. Make sure not to jeopardize the connection, the relationship. Don't let your mind run off to la la land and start creating all these crazy scenarios because i feel like you do this as a form of defense mechanism when you feel like things are a little too good or like too constant too stable you have a tendency of shaking things up by challenging your partner and for some of you guys it could be that you start thinking like it's kind of becoming boring and what is it that they're doing is their attention somewhere else I feel like you let your mind get the best of you. And I see that everything is in balance right now. And sometimes people have a tendency of fucking up basically something that is good because they let their doubts or their fears take over. And it's kind of like, it's, it's almost the energy that I'm sensing is almost like things are too calm 
something has to be going on. So then you start digging and you start getting into like too much in your head and you let your insecurities get the best of you. Um, and again, people have a tendency of feeling like when a relationship gets to a point where it's extremely solid and stable, it could become a bit mundane. And instead of deciding to, you know, freshen the, the relationship up or spark the flame or instead of doing that, like people have a tendency of self-sabotaging themselves. So they start to create all of these crazy scenarios and they start acting or reacting to their partner based on insecurities just to, like I said, just to kind of self-sabotage yourself into being happy and accepting that there is stability here. So if you feel like you're dealing with that type of situation or this could be your partner, it is a general reading, Scorpio. If you feel like things have been progressively going very well, um, but it's kind of like a, a standstill right now or like I said, it's very stable. But for some of you guys, you may be feeling like it's a little too weird to be this good. So you're like too much in your head. Try the best you can to realize or to internalize where this fear is coming from because I don't want you to hinder this connection. I do see it very solid and it does have promise for major stability. But I feel like I don't want the insecurities to get the best of you where you F it up and then later on regret it. Um, so if you feel like you're dealing with that, try the best you can to, like I said, figure out why these insecurities are kicking in. Why is it that you are doubting your partner? Is it because they're actually giving you reasons to doubt or is it because... You're running based off of how you were feeling that day that just because they said, I love you in a very different tone, you took it personal or you thought too much into it that you kind of convinced yourself that they didn't mean it. Um, sometimes our mind can do crazy things, you guys. And like I said, most times people that have traumas that they have not healed from um, do have a, a tendency of self-sabotaging. So again... Highly encourage you guys to internalize that <clears throat> if this is something that you are definitely dealing with. Let's see what the overall energy message here is for this situation for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, and we have Driftwood and Transmute. So again, Transmutation speaks about, you know, going from a negative state of being or a negative way of thinking or a negative type of pattern into a positive. And how do we transmute that? You can't go from being negative to being extremely positive, right? Because it's not natural. The way of doing it is to taking action, to taking steps towards understanding your nature, understanding your thought patterns, understanding where your fears come from understanding that then you'll be able to redirect your mind and your thoughts when you are having doubts or when you are fearful being able to pinpoint exactly the moment in time where you feel threatened because i know scorpios have a tendency of doing that the moment you feel threatened it's like you become um your defense mechanism kicks in and you start testing people or you push them away uh, because you're trying to protect yourself in the long run How, however this is your process right how you guys think you're trying to protect yourself in the long run, but really what you're doing is hurting yourself because you're hurting the people that really care for you or that are being genuine with you. But then they feel like you're kind of just testing them test after test and some people just outgrow it. If it's a high vibrational person, someone that's very wise and a lot of experience, I can tell you from experience, they're not going to deal with that or they're not going to want to be jumping through hoops to prove to you Um maybe what they want other people to prove to them as well because you have to remember the coin has two sides you know what i mean it's not just what you've been through but also the person that you're dealing with also has history also has a past so again highly encourage you guys to transmutate uh this negative pattern that you have a tendency of doing so that you can better heal yourself and also help yourself into being okay being loved in a healthy manner all right, <clears throat> moving on, let's go to Sagittarius. Let's see what's going on with Sagis. Oh, okay, I'm going to put them back in. Sagittarius, Sedman, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with their person, the person on their mind. Sagittarius, Sedman, Rising, Venus. 
Let's see what's going on there. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. All right, Sagittarius, we have here the Seven of Cups, the Five of Swords, the Chariot, the Five of Cups, the Three of Pentacles, and the Knight of Swords. Holy fudge. Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me. At the bottom, we have the full card. I feel like it's coming up in the reverse position. So this is indicating to me um, making irrational decisions or being very quick or hasty into making decisions or into how you decided to view this person that you were dealing with. And I feel like with the seven of cups, it's giving me almost like um, smoke and mirrors type. Uh, it's giving me the energy of they presented themselves themselves to be more than what they were or like the picture perfect boyfriend or girlfriend type of energy but it was mostly ego based it's almost like a character that they put on or a you know some type of reputation that they may have for some of you guys you could have been dealing with a player or player type energy um and i feel like you were putting effort or were willing but you're starting to see this person's true colors or you're starting to see this person's real way of thinking or the way they really are. And there's almost this feeling of disappointment. Um, if you are dealing currently with this situation, uh, Sagittarius, I would highly encourage you guys to walk away from this because I feel like it's not adding and it's not giving you any type of positive outcome it's not giving you like they're not adding to your life they're not bringing some type of you know lesson even sometimes we have to you know learn lessons through very un or hurtful experiences but i feel like it's not even doing that for you i feel like at this point what they're telling you is that you need to open your your eyes up sagittarius stop being blindfully hopeful into believing um, or letting people sell themselves to you at face value. If they're not putting effort and they're not showing you through actions, do not even waste your time. Um, because this is, again, with the Seven of Cups and the Five of Swords, a situation where you have either gone through it multiple times or you continuously keep going through it. And at this point, yes, uh, sometimes we need courage. Sometimes we need, um, you know, tenacity to... to have the courage to take on new beginnings and, and, and to be optimistic. And, you know, that's beautiful and amazing. But when does it come to the point where you give your heart out to every single person that promises you the stars and then you end up feeling like a fool because they hurt and stomped all over your heart? So at this point, what Spirit is telling you is don't fall for it. And if it's a situation you're dealing with right now where you feel like, you know, is it something that I'm not doing right? Is it that all of a sudden they turned into like from day to night completely different? It's not that they it's not that they changed. It's that they pretended to be something that they weren't. And now they're really showing their true nature. My advice is completely cut them off here with the Knight of Swords. Um, don't hold on to anything that is not, like I said, anything that is not adding a value to your life. Whether it's sometimes, and I'm not speaking primarily on an economical way, as an example, uh, when we're talking about relationships, if your partner um, is not necessarily doing that great, right, financially, but you know that this is a person that motivates you, you know this is a person that believes in you, that's cheering you on, believe it or not, that's adding value to your life. But if this person is not doing that and all they're doing is creating more insecurities in you feeling like you're going crazy because you're judging them for something but in reality it's not judging is that you're reacting to the way they're making you feel and then they turn it around and make it seem like you're the crazy one at this point saggy you need to walk away from that you don't need that in your life what is the overall energy here what is the overall message for this reading for sagittarius sagittarius suddenly raising venus and we have ghost and vanish. Yeah, I feel like this is not a constant person. If you're recently dealing with this energy and you're kind of still trying to figure them out and you're like, you know, they seem very interested last night's conversation and then today they go ghost or they're not really communicating. That's their tendency. That's what they do to have people hold on to them. Don't do that. Like show them the freaking door. 
All right, my lovelies. Now moving on to my lovely Cappies. Let's see. Oh, let's see what's going on with Capricorns. We have the Justice card just flip. But I'm going to put it back. Let's see what's going on with Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorn's person, the person that's on their mind. Let's see what's going on there. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right. How are you, Cappies, holding on, by the way? You guys, this Pluto in Aquarius really <laughs> shook me. Uh, major transformations in every single aspect. I'm just trying to like survive, you know, trying to keep up. I know in the beginning is chat, especially right now that it's in retrograde in Capricorn again. Um, yeah, but the positive in that is that all the shit we need to work out, it's like that we've been trying to run away from or not wanting to deal or accept. It's like we're being basically pushed into the fire. And it's like one way or another, you're going to come out. Um, transmutated right <laughs> with the fire uh you're gonna come out one way or another transformed so do not fight it you guys walk through the fire <laughs> all right capricorn sun moon raising venus let's see what's going on there the person on their mind all right here we go cappies yeah the tower what was i just saying <laughs> all right Ta Ooh. okay all right so Capricorn, we have the tower here, Ace of Wands, Queen of Cups, Ace of Pentacles, High Priestess, powerful energy here, you guys, okay, and the Page of Swords. So there is definitely someone that is lurking, someone that is looking at your social media, someone that is um, really wanting to know more about you with the tower card here and two aces. I feel like you're dealing with an energy of dealing with and for some of you guys, you're going to start to deal with people from the past. And we're not just talking about in love. We're talking about in every aspect. It could be friends. It could be people. It could be colleagues. It could be even high school friends, you know, that you guys just fell out. You're no longer in connection with. And all of a sudden, they're coming back around. And the reason why they're coming back around is because there were some type of connections that were not completely, like, they didn't serve their purpose yet. And I feel like that's the reason why they're coming back around. Now, with the Tower and the Ace of Wands, for those of you guys that are single, I'm just warning you guys, there is a very strong, powerful connection that will be coming through for you guys either this month or I should say the end of this month, the beginning of next month. But it can run all the way to October because I'm hearing I'm hearing Scorpio here, or Scorpio season. So for some of you guys, like I said, there is a major transformation that's happening here in regards to your love life. Um, for some of you guys, if you were dealing with a situation where recently there is some type of epiphany, there was some type of understanding um, or some type of completion, some type of ending that ended very abruptly. I feel like it was something that was long in the making. And at this point, the reason why that's happening is because spirit is guiding you to the person that's for you. And with two aces, whether you're ready or not, it's coming in and it's coming in quick. It's coming in hot and quick. <laughs> Ace of Wands and Ace of Pentacles is indicating to me that it's going to be a very fiery connection, a very physical connection. But this person is going to show you through actions with the Ace of Pentacles here. So I feel like your heart is, especially those of you Capricorns out there that have had your heart on a lock or behind a lock. It's like they're going to come in and they're going to break that shield down, whether you're ready or not. And with the high priestess, I feel like you're going to feel this on a soul level. You're going to know who this person is when they show up. However, I do see roaming energies around you. So do not be surprised if you start dealing with people from your past. This could be exes. This could be friends. It could be people or old crushes from the past that are going to come back around. They're going to be knocking on your door. Um, metaphorical door, right? Whether it's through text or social media, but I do see them lurking and looking at your things, looking at your life or how your life has been. It could be them trying to catch up um, to what's been going on in your life, but I definitely do see major transformation here. If you guys are currently dealing with someone, I feel like this person is not necessarily for you and the universe is going to shake you up because they will reveal to you certain truths about this person that is going to... Um, 
not vibe with your integrity or with your soul, like on a soul level, you're going to be like, okay, this is the one red flag that I cannot overlook. And you're finally closing the chapter or the door on that. Right when you do that, Capricorn, this new person comes in. Or right when you do that, this person that's for you is going to come back in. Now, another theme that I'm hearing is for some of you guys, there could have been a connection in the past with a water energy, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. I feel like there was almost like a missed opportunity here or both your paths kind of took, your paths took you guys on separate, your destiny took you guys on two different paths. I feel like there is a, almost a shakeup that happens that is going to bring you guys to the same road. Um, so for some of you guys, it could be finding love in the person that you knew in the past that perhaps never took flight. So this is giving me crush vibe. It's not someone you actually dated. It's a person that you probably liked or they probably liked you in the past. Maybe they didn't have the courage. I feel like this time around, there is a reconnection and they finally speak up and you actually realize that in getting to know them, you guys have a lot of things in common. So interesting information here for you, Cappies. All right, let's see what is the overall message here regarding the situation for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. And we have predictable and clockwork. Yeah. So every time I see, even when I'm doing readings and I see in my third eye a clock, it usually talks to me about timing and also destiny. So for a lot of you guys, I feel like there is a predestined connection that is going to be unfolding for you guys. I don't feel like it's anyone you're dealing with right now, Capricorn. It is someone that you will be dealing with or someone that perhaps in the past you dealt with, but nothing came from it because timing was off. There's something that has to do with time as well as destiny taking over right now in your love life. All right, my lovelies. Okay, exciting news for Cappies. You guys definitely let me know how that progresses. <laughs> All right, moving on here, we are going into Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with the person on Aquarius's mind. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on there. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Like I told you guys, if you guys are interested in any of the services that I provide, whether it's spell work or personal readings or consultations, you can find all of that on, on our online store. If you guys are interested in our Manifest Your Destiny book or the journals that come um, with that new series, you can definitely click the link below. You'll be able to find all those links on there. All right, Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius. Oh, I think I didn't, you know what? I forgot to pull out the general energies for Capricorn. If I'm missing some of those uh, general energies, probably didn't need to know about them, but I definitely do need to look into Aquarius because I just remembered. <laughs> All right, so we have the Page of Wands definitely taking on a new journey for some of you guys. Um, there's momentum regarding communication for some of you guys. Some of you may be dealing with Earth energy, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo, uh, Scorpio energy as well, or Piscean energy is what I'm seeing. Um, so what I'm seeing here is there is almost like you're being challenged right now, Aquarius, in this connection. Um, there is in... It's almost like a trying to figure out or trying to get more of a meaning behind this connection. Uh, for some of you guys, you're seeking a deep connection and the person that you're dealing with is not necessarily that deep. Um, for others of you, it could just symbolize that you're ready at this point to fully embrace and give yourself to connecting with people, with connecting with not just romantic partners, but connecting with people in general. I see you guys much more open and willing to open up. And I do see you having opportunities to connect with multiple people. So for some of you guys, it could be deliberating, figuring out who's the right person for you. Because I do see options here. Now, if you're not dealing with this type of energy, keep in mind, it is a general reading. So time frame is, uh, time frame may be for some of you guys now, depending on your degrees in Aquarius, others may run all the way to July. 
But what I am seeing here is major transformation. You guys are letting go of past traumas. You're letting go of past relationships. I see you guys seeking deeper connections here, though. Uh, that's something that's coming on very strongly here with the uh, hanged man and the death card. I feel like there is almost like wanting to find purpose in relationships, which would sound weird to the normal person, right? But you're an Aquarius, so obviously I'm sure you're relating to this. Um, so what I mean purpose in relationships is oftentimes you guys have this you know, tendency of connecting with people on an emotional level, but the moment you feel like it's getting serious or like it's progressing and becoming much more stable um for some of you guys you may be challenged in the aspect of wondering like am i ready for a commitment do i want a commitment or am i okay being free and you know just having time for myself and basically being able to make decisions solely based on myself and my wants versus adjusting because of other people right um but i feel like right now there's almost like this desire to connect with people on a soul level and the only thing that would make sense for you is to connect with someone that connects with you on a mental, physical, and an emotional level. And I feel like that's what you guys are doing. You're kind of growing up or you're growing up when it comes to the desires and wants that you have when it comes to relationships. If you're not dealing with anyone, like I said, I see you guys really playing the field, but I definitely do see two specific options that are coming through for you very strongly. Um, and I feel very strongly for some of you guys, you may decide to go for the earth sign. Um, I feel like this person is going to bring a lot of experience and it's going to bring some type of uh, connection, whether it's connections in the aspect of connecting you to your spirituality, to your religion, to something that you're very invested in, that they may have interest in that. I feel like it, it kind of makes sense to you. Um, now for others of you, if you're dealing with an, if you're dealing specifically with a person right now at this point in time, and you feel like it's being challenged, the connection is being challenged right now, the reason why it's necessary to be challenged or the, the reason why you're, cha you're experiencing challenges right now, it's because spirit is trying to do you a solid by trying to figure out if this person has it in them to be willing to put as much effort and energy as you are when it comes to working out and being on the same page. And I feel like when I say the universe is doing you a solid, I feel like they're weeding out those that are not for you, Aquarius, because you're aligning yourself to your soul's purpose. Um, we are experiencing right now uh, the North the North Node. Um being in alignment and what that indicates is our calling right it's it's our true calling or our soul's purpose so i see a lot of people right now trying to figure out like making decisions about life but they feel like it's just time for that change but in reality it's on a soul level what's happening is that their awareness is heightened right now and they're finding or wanting to find and branch out to what makes sense to them what makes or makes them feel at ease or at peace in their heart and in their soul. So again, it's about finding purpose right now for everyone um, in general. But I feel like for you guys, you're trying to find purpose in relationships if they make sense. If they don't, you're walking away from that and not hesitating to cutting out uh, anything that is toxic, anything that is no longer worthy of your energy, Aquarius. So amazing energy there. Now let's see what your general's, uh, general message here is regarding the situation. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, and we have Whirlpool Cycles. Exactly what I'm seeing here for you guys. So it's ending cycles, but it's also beginning a new cycle. And with this, what's really standing out here is the water, right? The transparency in the water. It's like... You're trying to find purpose and meaning in everything in life right now, Aquarius, and specifically when it comes to relationships. You're trying to figure out, do they make sense? Are they right for me? Um, are they adding to my life or are they deducting? And if they're deducting, you're walking away from anything that is no longer working for you or you're walking away from anything that is taking from you, whether it's your peace of mind, whether it's your emotional stability, you're feeling like they bring peace to you. If they bring nothing but chaos here with the five of swords, you're not hesitating about, you know, 
ending it or walking away from that because you're seeing things from a very different perspective here with the hanged man seeing things from a different perspective on a more deeper level so amazing energy i'm going to be completely honest okay aquarius that was for you my lovelies now let's move on to pisces let's see what's going on with pisces sun moon raising venus pisces sun moon raising venus with the person on pisces mind Pisces, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Let's see what's going on there. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Okay, one more shuffle. All right, here we go, Pisces. We have the Nine of Swords. Let me move this here. Nine of Swords, Eight of Pentacles, Queen, or sorry, Empress. Page of Cups. Knight of Cups, Knight of Wands, sorry, and the double card. Okay. Interesting, interesting energy. So there is a daunting cycle that you're going through, Pisces. I feel like this is a theme that you guys have been going through for the past three or four months. Um, we do have Saturn in your in your sign, Pisces. So um it's like you're being forced, and if you're not being forced right now, you will be forced to pay attention to your habits and your cycles. And when we talk about habits and cycles, we're talking about the toxic or shadow side of you. Um, I feel like there is this constant desire to connect with people, maybe put them on a pedestal, think the best of them because the romanticism behind it is very exciting. But once it gets real or once you start really getting to know the person, you find out that it's harder to maintain the connection or that you often have to sacrifice more than what they are investing in this connection. And it's a toxic cycle that you need to end. Um, if you're currently dealing with someone, what I'm seeing here is you feel bound and you feel tied to this person because you've invested too much time for some of you guys, too much money for others of you. You've invested to the point that you've brought them around the family and you feel some type of high responsibility. But with two knights and the devil card, it's like this is a person you're trying to change a person that is not going to change unless they want to change. I feel like this is in their nature. With the Knight of Cups and the Knight of Wands, this is a very immature person on an emotional level. They do not know how to process their emotions. And it is a very toxic person. It's a person that could be conniving, uh, selfish. This is a taker. And it is absolutely nothing to do with your energy, Pisces. Um, you guys are extremely loving loving to the point where you often sacrifice when it comes to relationships, whether it's because you're trying to sacrifice because you've put too much time, you've put too much money, um, whether it's sacrifice in the aspect of making things happen for them or doing them favors or basically doing too much and then getting to the point where instead of calling it quits, you hold on because of what others may say, you hold on to the feeling of responsibility, you hold on to I've invested too much in this connection, whatever it is. And what spirit is telling you, it's time to awaken the goddess in you, Pisces, or the God in you, regardless of what your sex is. It's like, it's time for you to understand the divinity that you bring into relationships. What's standing out for me here with the Empress is the heart, right? That your genuine and pure intentions that you bring into any type of connection or any type of relationship when we're talking about love and romance. And you deserve nothing but, at the very least, the reciprocation of that Pisces. So I feel like you guys are being pushed to realize that. And unfortunately, it's going to come at the cost of pain. It's going to come at the cost of tears for you. Why? Because you. this is a cycle that you've been repeating. And at this point, you know, it, it's kind of like we continue to go through cycles because of two things, whether we learn from them or we don't. And if we don't, then we keep making the same mistake. And in the same mistake, the cycle continues until we get it right. So at this point, it's learning, right? The, the Empress is all about unconditional love. It's all about giving. It's all about nurturing, right? But 
having to deal right at the center with the eight of pentacles, like how much is too much? And is it going to come at the cost or expense of, you know, to maintain a relationship? Does it mean that you are going to have to be paying for every time you go out? Are you going to have to, if you decide to move in, are you the one that's often left to be the one to deal with, you know, the bills, the, the mortgage? If they're, again, we go back to the conversation that I had with Sagittarius. If they're not bringing anything to your life, even if it's only thing that they bring is peace, peace is a very high value energy. So if they can't bring anything else, at least have them bring peace to you. But if they're not bringing anything and instead of adding to your life, they're deducting they are reducing from your life, then you know off the bat that you are beyond this type of connection, Pisces. So it's time to start making rational decisions. It is time to start using your mind when it comes to your heart. Why? You have Saturn energy in your sign. So what does that mean? That means that whether you like it or not, Saturn's energy is going to teach you the hard way, right, that you need to learn to make you a priority, that you need to learn to protect yourself in your investments because yes, even being in a relationship is an investment. It's an investment of energy. So if they're not reciprocating, not even half of what you put into connections, Saturn's energy is going to show you, like, like I said, through hardship that you need to get it right, girl, or boy, you need to make it about balance and allowing them to give or to do for you. And if they don't, then that is not a person you want to deal with. Walk away from this connection, you guys, because I'm going to be honest. I feel like <clears throat> the card that flipped over for me um, right now when I was going to shuffle the deck is character. And I feel like this is something that you are being tested right now, Pisces, because they're... I feel like for a lot of you guys, you're going to be universe is revealing to you, your partner or person that you're dealing with, like their true character and coming to the realization, like, are they supporting you or are they not? And I feel like they're not. And in the not supporting you, it's going to show you really how they are. And the biggest mistake that anyone can make, and this is something I tell my clients often, what we need to remember is that not everyone has your heart. Not everyone is going to do what you do. Not everyone is going to be or act or do or give the way you do. And that's a realization that you need to remember because even though not everyone is like you, no one processes things the same way. But a person that genuinely cares for you is going to make an effort to learn your love language in some way and if they can't even do that that's a taker and you are beyond that pisces all right my lovelies now moving on to aries let's see what's going on with aries here aries sun moon raising venus the person on their mind aries sun moon raising venus the person on their mind aries sun moon raising venus one more shuffle. All right, here we go. We have the Ten of Wands, the Nine of Wands, the Eight, sorry, the Nine of Cups, the Two of Wands, the Ace of Swords, and the Ace of Wands. Okay. What I'm seeing here for you, Aries, is you're coming at the realization that this connection or this relationship is taking too much on your part. For some of you guys, you've taken on too many burdens, even responsibilities that are not of your own because you were so focused or consumed with chasing your happily ever after. For some of you guys, you could have ignored major red flags about your partner. And I'm going to say something. If you're currently dealing with someone that is extremely possessive or jealous, they're not going to change. And you hoping that they will is, is not, it's not realistic. Because with the Ten of Wands here and the Nine of Wands, it's almost like you're sacrifice, you're constantly sacrificing and you're sacrificing for the bigger cause, right? Which is like to 
work the relationship out to solidify it, to make it strong. But the more you pour into your partner, the more you pour into, I'll sacrifice this one time, and then it keeps repeating and you keep sacrificing and you keep sacrificing, hoping that their trust or hoping that their personality is going to change, you're going to find yourself realizing that you're emptying your cup all the time and that nothing you do is going to mount to what they expect from you. And the reason for it is because they have this type of standard in their head about how you should be and you've been so focused in becoming what you, what they what you think they want you to be that you're not really being able or given the opportunity to be your authentic self. So there's a constant feeling of being either let down or feeling like there is no amount of energy or effort that you put into it is ever going to be enough. And I feel like this has been hindering you guys in your confidence. Um However, I do see a new beginning for you guys, and, and, and this is not necessarily to speak about the person you're dealing with, because I see a new person coming in. And the thing about this is when we deal, when we deal with relationships, right, where the partner is always expecting so much from us and we're putting so much effort and we're putting so much energy into the situation that we never actually ask ourselves, like, do we even like this person? Because I'm sensing very strongly that it's almost like you're realizing or you're seeing who this person really is. And it's it was nothing compared to what you thought they were. Uh, there is a feeling of disappointment. There's a feeling of being like let down. But I feel like this revelation is a positive thing because it's going to hit you like, you know, like a lightning bolt. And once that happens, like you're going to free yourself or you're going to be okay with it's like enough is enough. And we have the six of cups here. It's like going back to remembering who you were or realizing like you've completely have lost yourself or have tried so much to accommodate your partner or the person that you're dealing with that you kind of forgot who you are. And it's the desire, like something happens where you're being triggered to remember who you are, Aries, and you start to look back at the past and realize like I was happier then when I was able to be my authentic self and, and there's this desire and there's this want to to be who you really are. And, and that's the thing about relationship, you guys. And this is something that I tell, you know, my clients all the time. When it comes to relationships and partnerships, you have to see the partnership or the relationship like a business partnership. If you go into a business partnership with someone, the only reason why you would go, because it makes sense, and because you know that they're, pu they're putting in the effort or energy that it needs, whether it's money right? Because they're partnering up with you, they're buying a part of the business, or they're willing to pick up on things that perhaps you need help on, or perhaps that they've mastered better than you. It's a partnership. And if you learn to look at relationships like a business partnership, at the end of the day, you won't be and you won't end up losing more um, seeing it that way, even if it doesn't work out, because you're holding people accountable. There's a difference between having um, like expectancy from someone, like having expectations. There's a difference between having expectations and having, what's the word I'm looking for? There's a difference between having expectations and having, not necessarily rules, but having, um, I can't think of the word. Oh, you guys, I completely went blank right now. Having expectations. And having rules, <laughs> not necessarily rules, but I can't think of the word. 
there is a difference because expectations is something you're hoping to see in someone or find in someone, right? And when you have rules or when you have certain type of, you know, deal breakers, for example, you know, like there is no hesitation. The moment that person does or says or acts this way, it is completely done. It is finito. It is over. It, that chapter is done. Like expectations is what you expect for other people to uphold, right? When you have rules or when you have certain type of regulations for yourself to deal with those type of people or the future partner or the person that you're dealing with, when you have deal breakers, like I said, you're not going to hesitate. Like the moment that person crosses that line, you're not going to hesitate and you're like, I'm done. So what they're telling you here is like, there is a realization of I've sacrificed so much. I miss who I was because I'm no longer that person. I am completely the opposite of what I was at some point in time. And this aha moment is going to open the world for you, Aries, and it's going to make you confident. It's going to make you empowered. And it's also going to make you be in control of your love life because now you have regulations. Now you have rules. Now you have, you know, let's just say rules because I can't think, I have the word in the tip of my tongue and I just cannot for the life of me think of it right now. But anyways, um, you're having clarity in regards to what it is that you want and what you expect your partner, how you expect your partner to treat you. And you're no longer hesitating or even wrapping it up in a nice way. It's like you're being you unapologetically, regardless if it offends whoever it offends. And I feel like this has been long in the making for you, Aries. So kudos to you, Aries, because if you have been dealing with this type of partner, I mean... No one likes an overbearing partner. Um, and some people do like clinginess, and that's fine. If that makes you happy, then that's, that's your love language, right? But there is a difference between being clingy and being, like, super jealous and possessive. Like, one thing is protective, like being protective, and another thing is being obsessive. Or um, being obsessive or being not protective, but... Um, overbearing and no one likes to deal with overbearingness so if you're having just this realization good for you Aries you deserve better than that and your general message here is chaos and confusion I feel like you guys are it's a situation that you've been dealing with for quite a while it's a situation where it's brought in a lot of turmoil within yourself, but I feel like you guys are going to be much more empowered. You're going to start to see things more clearly, Aries, and I feel like this month is going to be very positive for you in the aspect of basically forcing you to embrace new beginnings and to untangle, you know, the because what's showing here is a lot of, the wire is being tangled and it's like for some of you guys it could be a situation where you've been dealing with a lot of chaos a lot of turmoil and yes I love them and you know but I've also learned to love you know their possessiveness their jealousy their etc cetera, etc cetera, until it comes to a point where they have you even doubting yourself or being more insecure about yourself it's like I have to watch what I say or I have to watch the way I talk to if you're a female, I have to watch the way I talk to guys because I don't want to offend my partner. I don't want him to think that I'm flirting or you've become so self-aware to the point of judgment. You're judging yourself so much and it's based off of insecurities that this person has stemmed, you know, to you throughout this time that you've been dealing with them. So again, I feel like this is a good revelation for you because you're having an aha moment and that aha moment is you realizing that the distinction, like I said, between being possessive and being protective, two different things. All right. And finally, we are here with Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. The person on Taurus's mind, Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's 
see what's going on with Taurus. My lovely Taurus. The person on Taurus's mind. All right, here we go, Taurus. We have the uh, Knight of Cups, the Hanged Man, the Three of Pentacles, the Queen of Pentacles, the Devil, and the Strength card. Okay. The bottom is the Knight of of pentacles so for some of you guys you may be dealing with er uh, another earth energy a capricorn taurus like yourself or a virgo um i see that you guys are trying to figure out the person's intentions for some of you guys it's like they become very difficult to predict or to kind of decipher uh for some of you guys this could be an extremely spanking new person and there is definitely very strong physical connection here, but you're wondering, is there more to this connection or is that all that they are seeking or that they are wanting? I feel that this is like a situation where both of you guys are too much in your head, Taurus. Because um, I feel like they're dealing with the same. They're kind of trying to figure you out. Uh, like this is why I'm sensing like it's extremely spanking new connection. But there is almost like a, a captivating, alluring type of mysterious type of energy around this connection. However, I am going to say, if this person is extremely private, if you've been dealing with them for like, let's say, five months, and they're not being completely honest or transparent, or they're not bringing you around their friends, or they have a specific, like you guys have a specific day when you guys hang out, or if you guys are literally seeing each other at night, um, obviously this person is, is, is not being completely honest or transparent. And if it's something that you've been intuitively picking up, then you're not wrong, Taurus. It's time for you to open your eyes and see, like, if you've been dealing with someone for three months, I understand they're not going to go off and introduce you to their friends, right? But if you've been dealing with them for like four or five, six months, like, it's time for for them to bring some type of clarity. And I feel like at this point, it's just something primarily physical, animalistic, the connection. So I don't really see anything becoming more than what it is. I do see the desire there to want to make it something more stable. Um, but like I said, only if you've been dealing with this person for more than six months, six or more, uh, I feel like at this point, they themselves don't know what they want. And if you've waited that long to be dealing with someone, they're not going to give you anything that is stable at this point however if it is a recent connection someone you just recently started dealing with and it became extremely or off the bat extremely physical i don't feel like you're wanting to get to know them because they're mysterious but they're mysterious in like not a good way they're mysterious because they're keeping shit away from you like the, there's no you know alluring type of energy i feel like you're excited about this connection but i feel like it is what it is and it's time you accept that because you're not wanting to see what it is so it's coming off confusing <laughs> let me explain if it begun something physical right and like let's just say a booty call and you're hoping that it's going to turn into something else but they still after three or four months they're still treating you like a booty call, nothing's going to come from it. And you're them being extremely private or them not really like having you on their social medias or whatever. It's not exciting, like mysterious, exciting. It's mysterious because they are genuinely not wanting for you to know what's going on in their life. So don't fall for that game, Taurus. Um, now, for those of you guys that are single, what I am seeing here is there is this energy, um, and for some of you guys, especially around the time of uh, Leo season, which would be August, there is a connection that's coming through for you very, very strongly. For some of you guys, it could be a specific Capricorn that's going to be coming into your life that may be introduced to you either through friends from work or at the workplace. This is a new energy that's coming through, and I feel like the physical attraction is off the charts. I feel like this person is... Um, very very like there's something very charismatic about them it could be like almost giving me the energy of like devil energy like devilish um someone that's very charismatic someone that is a very good talker 
However, I do see this being more on the physical aspect. So just be careful if you're not wanting anything that is not, if you're wanting for something exciting, definitely embrace it. If you're not looking for anything that is just fun and you're wanting something more long-term, I don't feel like you should entertain this because I feel like in the end, you're the one that's going to end up getting more emotionally invested in this connection, Taurus. Let's see what your overall spirits messages regarding the situation for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. But there is definitely very exciting times for you Taurus that are just wanting to have fun. This is definitely the type of person you want to have fun with. <laughs> No judgment here, you guys. Okay, and we have wetlands. <laughs> Mirrored energy. Um, obviously, wetlands, I don't have to go deep into that. I feel like this is, like I said, if you are looking to have a good time, right? Girl summer or boy summer, then definitely embrace this energy because this is definitely the type of person that's going to show you a good time. If you're wanting something more long term, then don't embrace this energy. So whoever you're very, very physically attracted to, off the bat, they start talking to you in a very sexual way. Just know that that person is genuinely wanting to be physical with you. But I don't feel like nothing stable will come from it. I feel like if you get emotionally invested, this is the type of energy where, you know, a one night stand or a fuck buddy turns into a fuck buddy that you've been dealing with for like a year, as an example. If you're not looking for that, then don't get into that. <laughs> All right, my lovelies. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. If you did, like, share, and comment. If you guys are interested in any of the readings, any of the services we provide, any of our books or journals, all of that's going to be on the description um, box below. You'll be able to find all of that on there. I will see you guys soon as uh, spell videos are going to be going up uh, the next day or two, so you guys definitely stay tuned for that. I will see you guys, and until then, bye-bye.